What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another episode of PS4 Jailbreak Tutorials, episode 11. So in this episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to PSN activate an offline account. So just to get this out of the way, what this basically means, it does not mean that you can play on PSN or anything like that, nothing that great. But it does give you access to some additional features on the PS4 that are locked out that will not work on local accounts. So most likely you will be on a local account on a jailbroken PS4 because... You can't actually sign into PSN and on a jailbroken PS4 since you're on an older firmware version. And therefore, you can't link a PlayStation account, a PSN account, to uh, the local account that you're currently using on your jailbroken PS4. And because you're stuck on a local account on a jailbroken PS4, that means that you don't have access to some features on the PS4 that you would have if it was activated. So, for example, application save data management, if you want to try and copy saves, uh, like create a modded save or something and copy it out to your USB drive so you can transfer it to another PS4, then that's not going to work on a local account because it needs to be PSN activated. So it doesn't allow me to do that. Same thing if I want to try and copy a save from a USB to the internal storage. Uh, same error message right there. And then also remote play as well is a feature that a lot of people want to use. But again, on a local account, it's not accessible. It needs to be PSN activated. So that is the idea. So, to, so PSN activating an offline account basically means that you are injecting um, a PSN account ID onto your profile so that the PS4 uh, sees the account as activated and then it will allow you to access those features that are currently locked out. You can just generate a fake account ID if you, all you're wanting to do is access remote play and you're not too fussed about the save files. Uh, if you want to be able to copy save files from like uh, your jailbroken PS4 onto another PS4, then you need to actually have a valid uh, account ID. So you need to like get the account ID from the account that you use on your other PS4 and use that account ID to activate your local account on your jailbroken PS4 because um, both PS4 accounts have the same account ID they'll be able to swap the saves between the two accounts because um, the save files are linked to a specific account. So therefore, if you have both accounts with the same account ID, then the saves will be usable between the two. Um, although, of course, if, a, if your other PS4 is on a higher firmware version, like, you know, 8.00 or something, then you can't transfer a save from an 8.00 PS4 to a 6.72 PS4. But what you can do is you can you know, take a save from the 6.72 PS4 and put it onto your 8.00 PS4 as long as both accounts are activated with the same ID. So yeah, that's basically the idea behind this. So if you just want to activate your account with, an, with a fake ID, which you can use to get access to some of these features, obviously, if you use a fake ID, then you're not going to be able to copy the save files out to another PS4. But if you just want to activate it with a random fake ID, then you can easily do that by hopping on to HXD, a hex editor, which I'll link in the description. If you just create a new file here and then just enter all zeros up to 07 right here and then highlight them, right click, fill selection, random bytes, click OK. And then there you go. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yep, needs to be 16 um, digits long. And then you can just pass this into a notepad document and remove the spaces by going to edit, uh, replace, then just put a space in the top box, leave the second box blank and then click replace all. And that will just get rid of all the spaces. And there you go. You've got a account ID that will be valid in the, in the sense that it will allow you to use this ID to activate your account. But of course, this ID is probably not going to be linked to any actual real account. Therefore, you know, you're not going to be able to transfer saves. So if you want to actually get a legitimate account ID, so we'll just call this one fake ID. So if you want a legit ID, then you need to have a legitimate PSN account. So if you don't have a PSN account, you can, of course, just create one. Go to PlayStation.com, you know, sign up for an account, set up a PlayStation account. Once you have a PlayStation account, so then you just go to store.playstation.com and then sign in to your account. And before you enter the email address and password, hit Control Shift I on Chrome to bring up the development tools. You can also, of course, go, go to the little three dots and go to more tools, developer tools, and that'll bring up the same thing. And then once you're in the developer tools, 
we're just going to head to the network section up here and then sign in to your PSN account. And you'll see a lot of activity happening here on the right. Okay, and there it goes. We're done. So, okay, and then once you're signed in, if you head up to the filter section up here and you search for get profile or just get pro, then it should come up with these two options here. So the top one failed to load response data. The second one should load the response data. And as you can see, the account ID is right here. Um, and then, of course, if you only have this one that says failed to load response data, just double click it and it'll open it. Uh, in a separate window and then there's the account ID right there as well. So that is one way of getting the account ID, probably the quickest and easiest way to grab it. Now it is in decimal, um, so that means you have to convert it to hex or you can just use the calculator in Windows and then you can convert it to a hexadecimal number. Make sure you grab the hex signed twos complement, uh, not the top one, and copy that one and then paste it in right there. So that is how we grab our account ID. Probably the easiest way. However, I do need to show you another way of doing it because obviously PlayStation often change the store. So the store isn't always the same. There used to be a method of like searching for me forward slash core or something which doesn't work anymore. Maybe it was a backslash. Nope, that doesn't work anymore. So you know, so there it used to be that you search for me forward slash core and then you would find the account ID now that doesn't work, you have to use get profile, but in some time in the future, that might not work either. So in which case you can either go through all of these files and just click on each one and scroll down until you find the account ID in one of these files, uh, which could take some time. So if that method searching for get profile does not work for you because they've updated the website, so it no longer gives that response anymore, then in that case, there is another way, which is a bit more complicated. So what you're going to need for this second method to get the account ID is Python. So make sure you download Python. If you go to Python downloads, again, all the links will be in the description. Download Python version 3.9.0 or whatever the latest version is. Just make sure it is version 3 point something and not version 2. Um, and then once you've downloaded and, and installed the Python installer, you can then head to this GitHub page here for this open source remote play client. And in here, in the scripts folder, there is a PSN account ID script right here. And if we go ahead and view the raw file right here and right click and save it, and then you can just save it to somewhere on your desktop. Right there, there we go. And now we have that I account ID script. So the way this one works is you just have to run the script using Python. So you need to have Python installed. Once Python's installed, you can just go to the directory where the script is, click up here in the path, type in cmd space and then hit enter, which will open up the command prompt in that directory. Then we're just going to copy the name of the script, paste it in right here, .py, and then we're going to hit enter. And it's going to come up with this. It's going to tell you to copy this link right here. So if we just grab this link and right click to copy it, and then we're going to paste that into the URL bar on our internet browser. And then again, sign into your PSN account. And once you've clicked sign in, you should get a little redirect thing popping up right here. Once that pops up, copy the link that's now in your URL bar and paste that link back into the script. Hit enter and boom, there you go. It will give you the information, including your uh, user ID right here, which is your account ID. And you can just copy it right there and you are good to go. So with that again, it's the same ID right here. Convert it to hexadecimal and you can paste that in. And as you can see, it is the same ID right there. So that is the other way of finding your account ID. So, so that's two ways you can do it. You can create a fake account ID or grab an ID from an existing PSN account that you have access to and then you're good to go. Now, another way to get your PSN account ID is that if you have another PS4, like a PS4 that has a PSN account on it, like a retail PS4 on the latest firmware, then you can go ahead and get the, the ID from that by copying a save file to your USB drive. And then if you plug that USB drive into your computer, you'll have a PS4 folder then a save data folder. And then in there, you will have an ID. And that ID is, of course, 
your PSN account ID um, that you want to use to activate your account on your 6.72 PS4. So that is another way of getting the ID as well. Although I find, you know, just using the PlayStation sign in method is much faster. So now we just need to activate the account. So to activate the account, we're going to be using the PS4 offline account activator. This has been updated for 6.72. So we're going to run this. We're also going to run Netcat GUI or some other payload injector. And we're going to copy the PS4 debug payload in here, which will be linked in the description, of course. Then we're going to change the port number to 9021. Uh, enter the IP address of your PS4 into the IP box. And before we decide to actually activate the account, there's a few things you need to be aware of. When you activate a account that you've been using on your PS4 for a while, it can you can run into some issues with trophies not syncing properly. Uh, you can have the issue where your um, profile picture disappears. So you'll lose your profile picture. Um, it can also cause games not to start if they have corrupted trophies. Then you might have to delete the trophy data and reinstall uh, or reinstall the games in some cases. So you can run into a few issues when you activate an account, especially if it's an account you have been using on your jailbroken PS4 for some time and you have a lot of save files and a lot of trophies built up. So just bear in mind that that can happen. Sometimes you get lucky and you don't run into any issues, but other times um, you could run into a bunch of issues by activating your account. So a, another solution to get around this is just to create a second user account on your PS4 that's brand new, doesn't have any trophies or saves on it, and then just go ahead and activate that account instead. And that way, whenever you want to use, you know, remote play or whenever you want to um, create a modded save and copy it to a USB or whatever, then sign into that activated account when you want to do those things. And then just sign into your normal local account when you want to just use the PS4 normally. And then that way you will avoid the chance of running into any of those issues. But of course, if you want to activate your main account, do it at your own risk. Just bear in mind, you might have some issues with the trophies and the save files. So anyway, what I'm going to do just to be safe is use the other account. So, so I'm going to go ahead and log out of the PS4 and sign into this one, user one, which again is not activated. And then I'm going to head on to the internet browser and head on to the exploit site. Then we're going to head into uh, 6.72 and I'm going to run the bin loader. Again, if you're on Lethal's host or PS Power or any of the other popular WebKit exploits, then, you know, you might have to run hen first or, or the load exploit option first before you can then run the bin loader. Uh, with Alazivs, you can just go ahead and run the bin loader straight away. Okay, so on Al Azov's bin loader, it will just say waiting for clients when it's ready for you to inject the payload. If you're on Lethals or PS Power, it will probably say something like send payload on port 9021. Once you get one of those two messages, you can then send the payload. So if we just click inject payload here on Netcat GUI, then we should be good to go. There we go, launching payload. And then you should get the PS4 debug by golden message popping up. Okay, so now at this point, we can then move on to the PS4 offline account activator and put in the PS4's IP address, click connect, and it should say connected down here at the bottom. Then click get users and just wait. And it should populate the list with all the user accounts on your PS4. You can see the IDs are currently set to zero. And all we're gonna do is grab that PSN account ID, whether you're using a fake one or the real one, and paste it in right here and at this point you can then click set id and activate to activate the account and then click get users a second time to make sure it actually wrote uh, that account id onto the profile so if we get users you can see that the id has not gone back to zero which means it has successfully written that id in there so that's it that's all you have to do if we head back onto the ps4 now the account is now activated. So to tell if it's activated, uh, you can just log out of the PS4 again. Okay, and then when you go to sign in, if you hit the options button on the profile, you should get this these two options showing up, appear offline or online. That is a sure sign that your account has been activated. If I hit the options button on the other account, nothing pops up. But if I hit the options button on this account, I get these two options showing up. So that means the account is activated. 
Now, you still won't be able to access those features on the PS4, remote play, and the save files until you restart the PS4. So let's just go ahead and reboot the PS4, and then we should have access to those additional options. Okay, so I've rebooted. So now if I sign back into that account, user1, and we now head to look at the different options. So here's an example. You notice the trophies now has a different icon. If I click trophies, I now get this message popping up and I have to view trophy information saved on PS4. So I have to do that to access the trophies instead of just clicking trophies and the trophies popping up immediately. So you get a few weird kind of error messages there. But if we head into settings and we go to uh, the application save data management and we go to save data in system storage, copy to USB storage device. Um, if you want to use the save data, copy to you must update the system, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And then if we look on here, as you can see, I have a Call of Duty Modern Warfare save showing up and I can actually select those and copy those to the USB drive. So there you go. That feature is now working. And that actually means that you can basically modify a save file. So you load up a save on your 6.72 PS4. You can now, you know, use a trainer, for example, to mod the game, mod how much items you have or how many how much currency you have in the game and then you can export that save to a usb drive and as long as on the ps4 you're copying the save to like an 8.00 ps4 as long as the account on that ps4 is has the same account id as the account you activated on your jailbroken ps4 that save will actually be usable on that PS4 on the 8.00 PS4 on the latest firmware. You'll be able to copy that modded save from your USB onto that PS4 and load up that save on a PS4 that's on a higher firmware and have access to those modded items and money and stuff in the game. So it's a pretty useful feature right there. And also, of course, we have access to uh, remote play. We head down to remote play connection settings. No problem. Gives me access to those settings. So yeah, I will probably do a separate video on remote play showing you how to get it working because um, the latest version of the PS4 remote play app doesn't actually work on 6.72. So therefore, you will still run into some issues using remote play. Um, there's third party uh, remote play clients like the one we pulled that script from. And there's also older versions of the official remote play client app from Sony and a patch that you can apply to it to get it to work. So remote play is totally possible. Um, you know, the hard part really is just activating the account to get access to the remote play connection settings. But now that we've done that, we can pretty easily get remote play up and running as well. So we'll be covering that in the next episode. So yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.